Hello and welcome back to another Jake Davidson production film. Today we're going to be looking at outboard engines. What are they? How do we get them started using a fuel tank and a fuel line? The controls of an outboard engine uh, and where it needs to be mounted on a SIB specifically. Now a lot of you will already know this information, however when I first started I couldn't really find a video out there which just ran through the bare basics of setting up the fuel lines, starting it, how it works, the gearing, that sort of process and also flushing the engine. There's lots of videos on flushing engines but I'm going to show you how I do it. Uh, what I like to use is a big bucket of water which goes over the very bottom of the propeller and all the in water inlet valves uh, and fully submerge it. Now. Flushing, what is that from people which don't know? Flushing an engine is uh, usually done, pretty much always done, uh, with, with fresh non-salt water. So if you've gone out in the sea, what you want to do when you get home with your outboard engine, you need to flush it with clean, fresh water. Now that will go all through the inlet valves of your engine uh, and all through the little systems and it will clear out all the salt and it will keep your engine healthy for longer. So let's go outside. Uh, let's show you my outboard, uh, let's show you how to set up the fuel lines, the fuel tank, uh, the controls and uh, yeah, see if we can help you out. Let's go. Right, so this is my engine here. Now this is a Tahatsu 9.8 horsepower four stroke engine. You can also get two stroke engines. I'm not going to go into any technical specification on this video. It's just simply um, a generic video of how to set up your outboard and their controls. But th this is my engine anyway. Um, what we want, what we've got here, is um, a throttle control, and uh, that that goes up and down like so. Uh, we've got a pull pull start cord here. Here we've got a gear selector switch, which you can put into forward, neutral, uh, and reverse if you push that in. We've also got what we call a kill cord, which we must wear when we're going along on the sib. Uh, we need to pop that over our hand, and uh, and then use the throttle controls like so. Um, the reason a keel cord is in place is if you fall off of your sib and your engine's running and you're going along, this clip here will clip out of place like so and, uh, and it will cut the engine out. So that you won't be able to start the engine without that either. Next to our gear selector switch we have what we call a choke. Now a choke will allow fuel into the carburetor to start the engine. So on starting we need to pull this choke all the way out but before that we've got to set up some fuel lines so let me show you how the fuel tank and fuel lines connect to this outboard here right so fuel lines and a fuel tank let's have a little look when you buy your engine they should come with a fuel line uh, a few but a fuel bulb and uh, and a connector now this end here uh, goes into your fuel tank and this end here will go into your outboard now a fuel tank for the outboard looks like this. This here is quite a generic uh, 12 litre fuel tank. This one here, as you can see, has a fuel gauge. Now that's really important to tell you how much fuel you've got in the tank, whether it's full, half and empty. So I recommend one with a gauge. Now on an outboard fuel tank you'll see at the top is a valve. Now that will say close uh, and open. And it'll also say vent, what well, it should do. When it's not being used, you need to make sure that valve is closed. So just twist that across to close. So yeah, in transit, the valve is always closed. And when you're filling it up as well, the valve is also closed. And that's that. Now to connect the fuel line, all you're gonna do is grab this end of your fuel line and you're gonna pop it over the top and just push it in. Just like so. You're then going to come to the other uh, end of your fuel line, which has this attachment here, and you're going to connect this into your outboard. Now, obviously, this is my Tahatsu uh, 9.8. It could be different on all your other outboards, but it's going to look pretty similar. We're just going to remove this cap here, like so, and then we're just going to pop this uh, over over those those valves there. Just making sure that's all connected in. Great. So now we've brought the outboard outside, we've connected the fuel line with the fuel tank and the fuel line with the outboard. We now need to fill up our buckets with water and make sure it's above the ventilation plate and the, air, the water intake valves. I'll, um, I'll take you down there and I shall show you what I mean. 
Now, my setup uh, is, is a little strange. I've got a few bits of wood down here, a bucket, and then another bucket, and that's just to raise this bucket to make sure it's above uh, the, the cavitation plate, which is, which is here. Now, uh, as you can see here, this is where water will get sucked through uh, your engine, and this is basically your cooling uh, inlet, so where the water comes through. Now, these need to be fully submerged uh, in order for your engine to run safely uh, and also effectively. There's multiple ways of flushing your engine. You can use muffs which go over the top, well they come from this direction, and they go over the top of these valves and you just run it with a hose pipe. I'm not a big fan of these, just simply because I don't believe that those water inlet valves get as uh, much water as they need. So I like to fully submerge mine in a, in a bucket like so. Obviously when you're on the sea, you're not going to have a bucket there, you're going to have the sea using, <laughs> using this uh, inlet valve. But, but for, for today's video uh, and the, for an engine flush, this is what you're going to need. Something like this, you can also use muffs or you can also use a massive uh, drum like this. Now, our engine down here is just uh, being submerged currently in uh, fresh, clean water. Now once it's, even when it's at the top, it will be overflowing over the top. We're going to leave the hose on, that's because this water is going to get sucked through and it's going to get ejected out what, uh, what you call uh, a telltale pipe. And you should see, if your engine's healthy and the impeller's working properly, you should see loads of water flowing out of this telltale pipe. If you don't, cut out the engine uh, and inspect it for dirt and grit, because sometimes it can just be a bit of sand in there and you just want to get a bit of wire in there and just move it up and down just to try and clear that sand out. I'll show you what you mean once the engine's running about this telltale, but that's just an important part to mention, is when your engine's running, you must make sure that there's plenty of water being ejected out the back, because that's your cooling system. Just checking the water level here. It's coming above those water in intake valves, and uh, once it is, I can uh, start the engine. Right, how to start an outboard engine? First things first, is you want to go down to your fuel tank. I was holding the bulb. <laughs> go down to your fuel tank, and that valve I showed you earlier, which said close, twist it to open. Now once that valve is open, just go up to your fuel bulb and just pump that a couple of times, two or three times, uh, and this will allow the fuel from there to get sucked up through the line and into your engine. So we're just gonna pump that two or three times and you'll probably feel it go a bit harder. Don't over pump this because you'll flood the engine. So just three times will be fine for now. One, two, three, and that's gone pretty solid. Pop that down there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna open up the choke fully. So we're just gonna pull the choke out all the way. We're going to make sure that our throttle is on zero, because if that's pushed across, um, what will happen is you'll get a really loud noise. It'll be all very unpleasant, and uh, and you could um, you could actually damage the engine if that gear here is anything but in neutral. Make sure that gear is in neutral. You don't want it in forward. You don't want it in reverse. That gear must be in neutral. So you want start it on on start or zero percent. You choke all the way out and in neutral. We're then going to come over to your pull cord. And we're just going to give it a couple of tugs back and forth. You might only need one, one or two goes, but we'll see. See how it works. Now you'll see there it started on the button. What I'm doing here is I'm just playing with the choke. just making sure the inlet valves are fully covered, which they are. And uh, as I was saying, I was just playing with the choke there, and just very gently pushing it in until we're getting a nice rev, which is what we're getting. Now at the back here, you can see the water is being ejected out the engine. What that means is our cooling system is, is working and it and is good. When we're going along on the sieve, make sure you're constantly checking that, because if it's not, it does need to be investigated quite quickly, because it'll burn your impeller out, uh, and then it will damage your engine. 
So that's the engine running. I'll uh, bring you a little closer and show you uh, the controls in a bit more detail. As I mentioned earlier, this is the throttle. Now this is a twist throttle. I'm not going to twist it because it will just make a load of noise and not do anything. But um, yeah, you just twist that to that side and that will increase the power. Obviously if it's in neutral it's not going to go anywhere, so let's go and have a look at the gearing. Your gearing is here. You've got forward, neutral and reverse. We're currently in neutral. If you want to get the engines forward, just pull that gear forward uh, and you'll start seeing the boat very gently move and then you can obviously use the throttle and, 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 and move in accordingly to where you want to go. As we were saying, we've got the choke there, that's now pushed fully in. because we've, we've matched. The, well, as soon as you hear that engine rev drop, you might see a bit of smoke coming out the back as well. That means your choke's a bit too rich, so just push it in very, very gently and just let it warm up a little bit. And then once it's fully warmed up, you can, you can push it all the way in. But generally, I'll start it on full, I'll push back to half, leave it for a little while and then push all the way in. This here uh, button will actually cut your engine, so if you want to stop your engine, just, just push that button in. Obviously, if you pull your cool cord out, that, that'll also stop your engine as well. As I said, when you're going along, you want to make sure you're wearing that as a safety protocol. Sort of thing I forget when I first started with boating, but uh, yeah, really, really important. It needs to be on there at all times, because if you come off, that will be pulled out and then it will cut the engine for you. As I mentioned to you earlier about the telltale, as you can see, if you want to feel this, it's not going to be cold, but it needs to be, you know, coolish. Uh, if that's hot, uh, there could be a problem with the engine, so you want to get that checked out. But it should be just cool, coolish, you know, not lukewarm, but it's, gonna, it's not going to be cold because it's gone for a warm engine, but it, it should be coolish. Now on an engine flush, which is what we're doing here, you want to leave it after a session. If you've been out on salt water, you want to leave it for at least 15 minutes. The longer you leave it, the cleaner it's going to be. Unfortunately, that does mean you're going to use a bit of fuel, but the, for the health of the engine, uh, that's, that's really important. Now, I ran this engine a couple of days ago uh, because it had been left for about four months. It started pretty quickly, but I just wanted to get it going, make sure it works nicely for the video. Um, but so we don't need to run it for much longer. Uh, so I'm going to show you just how to turn it off. Just literally, you just press the button in. Just like so. Really, really simple. And then uh, all you want to do is wait, wait till it drains all out. And then you can go ahead uh, and unplug unplug your fuel line if you, if you want. Just like so. Pop the caps back on to protect it. And then go back down to your fuel tank. Unplug it. So just pull the little cord off there, the little neck, and just pull it out like that. And then just then just lock it off and just click to close it. So just twist it to close. Like so. The last jobs are good. Em. So I've showed you how to start an outboard, how to flush an outboard, the controls of an outboard. Let's just have a very look at how to mount an outboard. I'm not actually going to mount it onto my sib uh, as it's on a trailer at the moment, which needs some adjustments to work the centre of gravity correctly. Haven't got around to doing that as of, as of yet, unfortunately. But um, let, I'll take you to the back of my sib and, and I'll show you where to mount it and how to mount it. So you'll see here it's just mounted uh, on a piece of wood. Um, so let's let's pretend this is your transom. You'll literally you'll get the, the mounting plate over the central bit of the transom and you'll just tighten these up. You don't have to go mental but just tighten them up a little bit. You'll see the white bit here is just marine grease. Uh, so you want to keep them nice and greased up and looked after. Now a lot of you guys are going to be using sibs uh, on a beach uh, and not necessarily on a slip away, but either way you're going to want to raise your outboard when you come in. So you're approaching the beach, you're about 10 metres away and you're still just cruising in. Obviously normally I have that in neutral then uh, and just let the boat cruise in. What we want to do to not damage the prop down here and to damage any of the bottom parts is we want to raise the engine. Uh, and what we I have on this Tahatsu, which all engines will have, is a little clip you can just pull forward and lift the engine. So I'm sitting here, I'm on the back of the sib, I need to raise the engine. All I'll do is I'll get the pin, the connector, pull it forward until it comes up. Simple. Now the reason why that looks a bit more difficult is because the, the stand there, it wants to lift up off the ground, but obviously if you've got a sib, it's not going to tip up, so that's why it's a little bit difficult there, but as you can see, that's how to, that's how to lift it. 
Now to put the engine back down again, it's just literally exactly the same thing. Just lift up the clip, like that, and then just clip it back down, like so. Nice and easy. Now one thing that's really worth mentioning is transporting a four-stroke engine is very different to transporting a two-stroke engine. A four-stroke engine has to be stored on the recommended manufacturer's side, so that either that, that side of the engine or that side of the engine. It can't be either because the oil will flow all around and get all into your compartments and it will cause you problems. You might not be able to start the engine and it just, it just isn't very healthy for it. So you need to have a look on your engine on a four-stroke to see which side to lay it on for transport. That's really important. On a two-stroke, uh, it can actually go either end. It doesn't actually matter from a lot of people I spoke to. They, they do it on either side. Um, but on a four-stroke, it's really important. It's that way or that way. And you'll see here. So you'll see a notice, this side up for transport or storage. So that means it needs to be lying on that side. And those little knobs there, which are protection knobs, will sort of tell you uh, that's the side to do. Because we don't think they're on the other side. Let's go and have a look. No, no protection rubbers, so that's how I know on this one, uh, as well as the little, little, little leaflet. Right, so thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it taught you a few bits and bobs. Uh, any questions, uh, anything you want to say, if you liked the video, if you didn't, please leave it below. Please comment. Uh, share the video if you wish. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The next part of this SIB series will be showing you how to make a storage box for your rods and all your bits and bobs. So take care, stay safe, and have a good week.